Today I'd like to draw our attention to the spectacular artist Manny Call. His debut feature, 1969's Uski Roti, is considered one of the major works of new Indian cinema, and much of his output since then has also been very acclaimed, especially within India. His third feature, his first in colour, 1973's Duvita, received attention across Europe during 1975, as well as enabling Call to receive India's National Film Award for Best Direction in 1974. Duvida is an adaptation of a short story written by Vijayadan Defa. I shall read out a review of this story, published by one Shreyashri on Goodreads. Oh, how beautifully the author puts forth the ultimate timeless dilemma of human beings, money or love. A young woman gets married to a rich trader and on the very wedding night he tells her that the next morning he would be travelling elsewhere for business and won't return for five long years. The husband, even if for a second, faces a dilemma whether to choose his young wife over business but his money monger father manipulates him to choose the latter. As the husband ventures forth, a ghost, smitten by the beauty of the wife, takes the form of her husband and enters the house. He is overwhelmed by the love that he gets, not only from the wife but also from the mother, the aunt. The wife has never been loved and respected so intensely and she falls head over heels for the ghost. The book very poignantly points out the shortcomings and selfish quests of human beings. Very interesting. The film was shot in author Defa's home village Baranda in Rajasthan and on a relatively lower budget. It stars Ravi Menon and Raja Padamsi. The captivating musical score was provided by local Rajasthani folk musicians Ramzan Hamu, Latif and Saki Khan. What do Vida reminds me of especially, with its focus on flora, its extreme close-ups, the tight framing, is of John Marie Straub, narratives which rely heavily on both expository explanation and photographic precision. Duvida requires a viewer to take in every moment of dialogue in order for them to truly appreciate the placement of a subsequent silent longer take of wild nature. The cinematography is courtesy of Navroz Contractor and is his first film credit on IMDb. Beautifully crisp photography, both his humans and his nature are gloriously depicted. Some wonderful information about this film and about Manny Call I found on indiancine.ma. I shall read it out here. Call's third film, financed by the FC, FFC, an independent multi arts co op led by the noted painter Akbar Padamsi, derived from a Rajasthani folk tale, it tells of a merchant's son, Menon, who returns home with his new bride, Padamsi, only to be sent away again on family business. A ghost witnesses the bride's arrival and falls in love with her. He takes on the absent husband's form and lives with her. She has his child, which poses a problem when the real husband returns home. A shepherd traps the ghost in a bag. The film focuses on the wife's life and dispenses with almost any dialogue, developing the characters through parallel, historically uneven and even contradictory narratives. The classical styles of the Kangra and Basoli miniature paintings inform the colour schemes, the framing and the editing, as well as the somewhat melancholic atmosphere of the film. This is contrasted by the full-blooded folk music score. Cole skillfully orchestrates the way classical and folk forms, apparently, contradict each other in the way they present each other's fantasy worlds, an opposition with many ramifications in the realm of everyday behaviour. It is one of Cole's best-known films and was widely shown in Europe. It was also sharply attacked by Sai Ajit Ray, who preferred what he took to be the realism of Benegal and M.S. Safu's work. And now some words on Manny Call from the same website, the same webpage. Born 1942, directed born in Jodhpur, Rajasthan, graduate from the University of Jaipur, 1963, and from the FTII, 1966, where he was taught by Gatak. Nephew of Mahesh Call. Often acted in Film Institute student films in the mid-60s and appeared in, as actor in Basu Chatterjee's Sara Akash, 1969. Received Jawaharlal Nehru Fellowship, 1974-6, part of the YUKT collective that made Gashiram Kotwal. Prominent cultural activist and organiser, often making common cause with Shahani in efforts to extend the range of Indian film cultures, and significant teacher of a new generation of FTII graduates, some of whom became key members of his film unit. First film, Uski Roti, is a cinematic exploration of narrative space and volume, defining much of new Indian cinema's formal vocabulary. Since Sata Se Ufata Admi, based on Hindi poet G.M. Muktibod, 
made features on, for example, Drupad Music and on Terracotta Artisans, emphasizing improvised reconstruction of available material. Edits his color films first in black and white, having printed every single take. Later work strongly influenced by his study of Drupad Music with Ustad, Zia, Mohiuddin, Daga, and of Anand Vardran's Dwanya Loka, a 9th century C Sanskrit text on aesthetics exploring states of conscious perception while positing language as possessing a specific suggestive dimension beyond its denotative or metaphoric faculties. Developing aspects of classical music theories, particularly the Sangeet Same Sa, 14th century, Call emphasizes the value of what is absent, the Vajit, the forbidden, as perennially in argument, Vivadi, with what is narratively present. The evanescent moment of creation is posed at the point where human action simultaneously registers what exists and in the process produces something unprecedented. His elaborate theory of contemporary aesthetic practice, seen from nowhere, was presented in the cultural historian Kapila Fatsiyayan's seminar Inner Space, Outer Space, Indira Gandhi National Set Centre for Art, and published in the book Concepts of Space, Ancient and Modern, among various non-Indian sources, has drawn from haiku poetry, the Nouveau Roman, Mannerist painting, Bresson and Ozu. Recent return to fiction cinema draws mainly from Dostoevsky, Nazar, Idiot, refused to sign the documentary Historical Sketch of Indian Women during the emergency when its producers, Films Division, required him to change the last shot and the commentary. For an average audience, Duvida might require some patience and their attention. You can't just have Duvida on in the background while you do laundry, right? You have to sit down with it at night, preferably, with no light but the screen you play the film upon. Formally, Manny Call invokes traditional artistic techniques, visual and literary, in considering his editing philosophy. Duvida's cinematographic philosophy is seemingly unintuitive, although it is a deliberated attempt at a structured photographic poetry, conforming frames to meter and verse, effectively a lyrical lull. Duvida is an incredibly unique cinematic experience, and whilst I find the film to be commendable narratively, I must say that without Call's particular approach to filmmaking, that this would be an entirely different trip. I have linked in the description a couple of pieces by one Arindam Sen on Duvida and on Manny Call in general. They're absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend them. I've noticed that Duvidar is receiving more attention seemingly like recently. A cursory Google search shows recent pieces in The New Yorker and on movie and Asian film polls, and it was recently screened retrospectively at Rotterdam. This is pleasing to note. If anyone has the opportunity to view Duvidar, absolutely do so. It is an extremely unique film. If one approaches this experience appropriately, it is destined to be a powerful memory among their viewing history.